Hey, welcome or welcome back to the channel today. More of The Wire. This is episode 2 from season 1, The Detail. Thoughts on the last episode? They're probably on the last half of there. I have not edited that episode yet. I just watched the first one yesterday. I slept on it. Today I looked at IMDb, checked out a little bit of the cast and crew just to make sure people were who I thought they were, and uh, now we're right back into it the next day with episode 2. So because I haven't edited yet, a lot hasn't been burnt in yet, like names or you know arcs or you know relationships per se. But it's safe to say that uh, this detective Jimmy seems to be a main character, and he has stirred up some shit with the judge about Idris Elba and, and his killings. And now new investigations are open, and uh, you know we'll see what happens. Anyways, I've rambled on long enough. No one gives a shit. Let's get into the second episode. This is the detail. Here we go. That's the witness, all right. One from the Barksdale case. Gamble. He was outside of the uh, dumpsters. Man's walking down the street in West Baltimore. That'll catch you a bullet for a half dozen reasons. Yeah, that it will. No wife, no kids. The only time his name pops up on the courthouse computer is for being a state witness in Barlow's case. This shit's gonna jump up and bite you in your ass. Just cover yourself. The classic, the boss doesn't want him digging around on this big thing. And you cannot lose if you do not play Marla Daniels. I hope Lance becomes, like, a central part of the show. I hope he's not some background character. I want him and Jimmy kicking indoors. There aren't any weird cameos or interactions, right? Like, people from Fringe are in this show and have scenes with him, you know, and later on would be in a Fringe together, nothing like that. We gotta fuck in this town to get a real office. Baltimore has some old-ass buildings. I've worked in a few of them. It'll be interesting to see what we see. I'm talking to you, my major's ready to cut my throat. Yeah. Jimmy, you knew I was going to make that call. Admit it. Question is, what do you want me to do now? I think you can leverage the deputy ops for the phone call. He's already detailed people. You lost a witness who testified in your court. That forces the department to commit the investigation. You ask for these guys? Ask for more manpower. What the fuck? We're getting negligent discharges in the building. I was just showing Carve how my trigger pull is light, you know? I got it so it's real light. He took the clip out, boss. But not the one in the chain. Uh, no. In an episode of Fringe, I think I cut it out, but I, I went on a spiel after uh, Peter dropped the magazine and then also cleared the chamber. I gave him props for doing the full clear. Your name is what? Fris Belusky. Fuck up. Blue fuck up. That's your name. From auto unit, right? Cantrell sent you. You think the man got paid? Who? Man, who have any deeds? Shit, you richer than a motherfucker. Why? You think you get a percentage? Why not? This is like a high person conversation, the but they're not deeds. high. Just... It ain't about right. It's about money. Now, you think Ronald McDonald gonna go down that basement and say, Hey, Mr. Nugget, you the bomb. We selling chicken faster than you can tear the bone out. So I'm gonna write my clowny ass name on this fat ass check for you. <laughs> I can't vouch for that, but I know there are a few cases of inventors and people and companies that came up with altering, history-altering inventions and procedures, and the company gave them, like, a 10% a, a bonus or, you know, extra vacation or something. It's like, Jesus, God. Presbelewski, him, I know. Yeah. He fired two clips into an unmarked car somewhere out in West Baltimore. Called in a Signal 13 on the radio like he was under fire from a sniper. He's Captain America from from a from, uh, from Generation Kill. I asked the deputy for manpower. He then tells property to send me two men, and special will send two more. And those shift lieutenants, they know it's a chance to dump the dead wood. He could have often let me pick who I wanted, but he didn't. He sent me a message on this. In the back of my head, that makes me think that they were given low quality cops to help out with them because somebody up high wants to keep shit quiet with Idris Elba. Make lemonade. Oh, the rest of the nail just went through my shoe, man. Ah, uh, tetanus. I'm gonna need tetanus to get my yeah. bullshit. 
ask him, if you don't mind me asking, when was it that you first figured you liked women better than men? I mind you asking. <laughs> No, 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 I'm not, I'm not in need of your services there, but I'm, I'm offering my services to y'all. Yeah, that's a telephoto. That's a bad motherfucker. I just watched Better Call Saul, and somebody was trying to snoop on someone with a camera, and I said, "Where, where's the, where's the big lens? Where's the telephoto?" Out of focus, ass. There we go. What's with the hats? I'm not Western District. I'm not a narco. I don't dirty people because I don't give a shit about a possession charge. I'm a murder police. What do you say your name was? I didn't say shit. Just you, me, and my partner, Mr. Shit here. <laughs> We're just talking about how things go, right? Right, but when you ace a witness... A working man? Who ain't even in the game. Are well, you gonna act like this is news? You see him put that red hat on anybody's head. Snap your fucking fingers off. All I see is some stuck-up dyke bitch. We ain't been in CID half the time you or me. And she's fucking telling us what to do. It ain't right. Yeah, maybe you two are a little too wild and she's a little more reserved. Look, is y'all gonna arrest me? Then go the fuck ahead and arrest me. If not, shut the fuck up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. you wanna get arrested? No. <laughs> shut the fuck up your own self. <laughs> fuck y'all, man. I'm out of here. Hey, hey, D'Angelo. You better bend the fuck over. Shit. <laughs> man, y'all ain't got nothing else to do today. Hey, it's Greg's. Get me the lieutenant. How's he still carrying a gun and badge? You know Balchek in Southeast? Yeah. Son-in-law. As long as she's not like dude from the Green Mile, you know? Percy. Look, take Brzezbluski back. I, you know, I can't. I would, but I can't. I gave Balchek my word on it, okay? Give me Sidner and I'll keep prayers. He's my best man. You can't take my best man. I'm taking your worst, remember? Yeah. <laughs> How about Steinman? But you give me Sidney and I'll carry Przybulski for as long as I can. Fine, fine, Cedric. Fuck, whatever. Jesus. You're giving me your worst person. Give me your best person to fucking balance it. Judge Phelan called this morning, crying about a witness in his murder trial was killed. Did the judge say where he heard it? Oh, he heard it from our man, McNulty. This is a poor fucking city, gentlemen. The last thing we ever need to do is to announce... We lost the witness. So that's their motivation, you know, the, the county or the city's motivation to want to not necessarily stir things up, to draw attention to the fact they lost the witness, but pulling him would kind of give it away or blow it up, so they just kind of have to hope he doesn't get there on his own. My partner called a murder, okay? It may have nothing to do with Barksdale at all. I just came from the office of the deputy ops where your own mage is telling Burrell to do you. You hear me? Rawls is giving you up. Oh, you got the deputies here? Well, in this case, I do. Yeah, then how come they send you every worthless hump in plain clothes? You ask for men, they send you drunks and fuck-ups. Yeah, he, he did ask about that. But isn't he getting the good guy? Who is he? It's D'Angelo Barksdale. That's the one beat the murder. Yeah, him. What do you have to connect him to the dead witness? Not a thing. You're along for this interview, but it's homicide's place, so let him leave. Y'all weren't the only lawmen down in the canyon today. Really? Where were you? I really like the cliques and the friendships and the side thing between all these people I mean, and the, the loyalty is, so far, even though it's only be dead. halfway through the second episode. I, can't. I mean, hell, you beat us in court. We don't take it personal. Fuck no. We get paid either way. You get up every day, go out, and do maintenance work. Two jobs and three kids. They could be embellishing facts, yeah, I wonder. Too. By embellishing them, I mean making them up. Well, he ain't had to testify. No, he didn't, but he did. And you still beat the charge, didn't you? Yeah, but that wasn't enough, was it? It's not enough to beat the murder. They gotta send a cold message to everyone in the terrace. Fuck the working man. No mama and no daddy. Oh, Jesus. It might be a good thing for you to write a little letter to those children. Tell him how you personally think your uncle, maybe he got it wrong this time because it's wrong. This emotional manipulation. They're doing a great job. Stabs himself in the neck with the pen. Ah! Church Deacon. That was thick. Got good to me, what can I say? Ah. Wait. Sad enough with the kids. Being orphaned and everything. <laughs> I thought it was from Bunk's Wait. Desk. Yeah, they didn't they say he never married, never had kids? Did that just yours? clicked with me. Yeah. By the elevators. 
That guy shouldn't have walked so fast. It looks like it might put a lot of pressure on his heart. The client gave no statement. We took no statement. He just decided voluntarily to write a letter to the victim's family. To say Shut that. up. If you don't say anything, you don't do anything. Do you hear me? Shut up. How many fucking times do I have to tell you people the same fucking thing? If you've ever worked with me before, you know I don't want cowboy shit and I don't want surprises. The task is Avon Boxdale. And Avon Boxdale only. No OT unless prior authorization. Case goes from red to black by way of green, Lieutenant. You people bring me something that needs OT, you'll get OT. Man, we have to do our job. Damn. I'm very sorry for your phone. If I could have stopped it, I would have. What can you do with this? Nothing legally. <laughs> Why apologize at all if you got nothing to do with it? This case needs informants, it needs long-term surveillance, and eventually it's gonna need a Title III wiretap. Hey, <laughs> you drive by that every once in a while on the way in if you're coming from the south. That means if you're going up 95 north from the south, you'll see that on your left. Hey, Z! My man, Z! My man, Z! Hey, this the little man? How y'all doing? You doing good? Yeah, yeah. You all right? So she want me to move in, thinking about it. It's like no matter what show he's in, he's dating above him, you know? Good for him. Got a name for that one? No. But uh, he's, he's one of the boys they're using the stairwell. Someone is someone you need to know. I put the red hat on. Come in here, take the pictures. I like that. Bubs does not forget that. Yeah, I ain't so good with names, but uh, you know, faces I keep in my head. Me and Bubs, we are similar. Probably forget his name. What? What? What's his name? Motherfuckers beat my boy down. Who? Little hoppers and low rises. Yeah, from the Who's first episode. I got a friend. Stay out of the projects next couple of days. Just to be safe. Girls always fretting over me. <laughs> <laughs> then they started crying about how the kids ain't doing so good. So, you know, I'm like, it ain't gonna hurt for me to say I'm sorry the man got killed. Oh, fuck, you gotta say you sorry. Is D'Angelo kind of like the uh, the Fredo of the family? Is, is is that the vibe I'm supposed to be getting? I said, what you think about what happened to me? You think we killed him, motherfucker? Not that he would betray them, but that like that he's weak. Speak your mind. I don't want to hear shit about you writing nothing to no one. Taking pictures of assholes in hats? What the fuck is that? Bullshit. Uh, I say we go down there right now. He said he didn't want any cowboy shit. Now the three of them are drinking and talking about wanting to go down there and do shit. You gotta let these motherfuckers know who you are. Weird frame rate on this drive up. Like, it's not the stream, it's the recording. It's, like, at a different speed. Hey, but don't act like you don't know me. Put your hands up. Put that down. Drop that shit. Drop that shit. Case the fuck your hands off. Feel me like I ain't talking English, motherfucker. So they're, they're rolling up here drunk, shaking people down. Are, are you kidding me? Stay down. Y'all collect bugs down, down, no? Who owned these towers? Because we coming back. I'm sick of this shit. Move, shit bird. I ain't doing nothing. You're pistol whipping people and you got a sensitive trigger? Are you kidding me? Lead on my car. Lead on my car. Get your shit off my car. It's Kim and Jimmy. Gravity wins. You got a visual? All right. You seen the paper? What? Oh no, his fucking team was going to be in a shootout. <laughs> oh no. You happy now, bitch? Oh, it got out there. That's hey, even worse than the team being under fire. Move that fucking desk out of my unit. That's Crutchfield's desk. Crutchfield's? McNulty sits here. What was that about? <laughs> the fuck happened to my files? I saw the story in the paper. I want you to know I had nothing to do. The car is burned out. Ah! <laughs> what are you doing here at two in the morning? <laughs> Field interviews, you know, police work. 
about two Kevlar vests that burned in a car, two handheld radios, a shotgun, and I'm about to lose this idiot here for a week or two of medical. And for what? Who cold cut the kid? Pass up. Me. No, Officer Prisbaluski, he did not piss you off. He made you fear for your safety and that of your fellow officers. You fucked the bullshit up when you talked to internal. I can't fix it. You're on your own. I mean, I like that they're getting their shit together, but I don't like that they're, you know, going outside of the legal, the law. They're like, you know, uh, well, you know, they're, they're rewriting what happened to, to be clear. So that ain't kosher with me, but at the same time, it's like if he needs these people for the bust, is it, it worth it to look the other way or, or hypocrite or do people always protect their own, you know, human no, behavior? I don't know. Everybody talks. I'm in the shit here, Your Honor. I called the deputy, not the newspapers. I got to run. You should have hung them. I hang them, I hang myself. Besides, you don't give your people up to IID. You don't do that. Even if they put a 14-year-old kid into critical care, the game is rigged. But you cannot lose if you do not play. Hmm. Come here, lover boy. And if he doesn't answer... The burnt out car is still there that hasn't been towed? Are you serious? The sounds of Baltimore. What's that sound? Because it, it looked like he caught all four of them asleep. The guys are drinking beer and causing trouble. He's sitting in his car, drinking out of a bottle. Can't even walk. Team's a fucking mess. He's blind in one eye. Oh. The kid. Oh. 14 year old. Interesting note to end on. There wasn't anything in the last set of credits, but I'll check this one out too, and then I'll see you in the outro. Season 1, Episode 2, The Detail, McNulty feels the heat when a witness who testified against D'Angelo is killed. Okay. In retrospect, I don't think it was a bad idea to maybe not edit the first episode before watching the second, because now that I have a wider view of the cast and, you know, where they fit in with each other and what they're gonna be like, now I think I have a better idea of how to represent them when I go back and edit the first episode. So that's just asterisk number one, just a disclaimer. But in regards to this episode, uh, <laughs> yeah, what a disaster. This tape is full of, like, drunks, people that aren't reliable, fucking cowboys doing their own thing, even after the pep talk of, I don't want any cowboy shit, I don't want any wild shit, and then what does everyone do? Character names are still elusive to me. But uh, I think it was Bubs or Bob's Bubs. Was that the the guy with the hat who was who was lining up the people on the crew for the uh, photographer investigator on the roof? Her name again. I'll pick up. It, it'll it'll come in editing. Okay, I'll get there. It was interesting how they got kind of got D'Angelo to write that letter for the kids, and even though it doesn't really admit any sort of guilt, there's a there's a feel there that can be pulled from it. So they they know that he's connected. And, and I made the comment earlier, is he kind of like the Fredo of the family? You know, I, I'm just saying, it just seems like two episodes in and he's, he keeps getting pep talked by people and he keeps fucking up. Uh, you know, we'll see going forward, but that's just where my mind is on him. I do want to say maybe it's a product of the time because this is from 2002, but I feel like they're taking their time with the show. We still don't have a wide view of the characters yet. Like, there, there are some archetypes that people kind of fit into, but I want to see more uh, of their friendships, of the cliques, uh, you know, and, and how that rubs against other people within the unit and how, how that'll interfere with their projects going forward. A big thing of that is, like, the, the, the homicide department and the, the narc department. You know, different different connections, different loyalties, different experiences. Internal affairs, you know, going to be probing both of them. So 
Anywho, that's going to do it for me for now. I'm not going to be able to watch the third episode until after my little excursion uh, house-sitting in early August. By the time you see this, uh, it'll probably be over, and the third episode will probably be recorded. So I'm looking forward to it. I hope to see you then, and thanks again for being here. Goodbye.